capital and technology always seem to keep ahead of the horse in a sense. I think it's always something that the rest of us are you know, trying to climb behind, and especially in the socialist movements and anarchist movements. It's always been one that you're trying to deal with and trying to conceptualize. I think, for example, you know, I think in part one of the reasons why Proudhon kind of gets lost, you know, the truth is like when we look at Proudhon and kind of those early anarchists like Josiah Warren, and even Benjamin Tucker, um, a lot of that history was lost, for example, is because I think that the technological changes, the economic changes, they had been addressing kind of the earlier half of the 1800s. I think one of the things that then move happened is that you then have Marx, you then have the shift to that communist side because what so many of the radicals at the time were seeing was kind of um, what Carson, I think, hints to is like the, the Taylorist, the, manager, the rise of the managerialist capitalism mm. of the late 1800s. That in part, I think also is kind of how why we see, you know, the communist movements of the time gear themselves to that. I think, you know, Lenin is a oh, well-known yeah, no. Taylorist and Trotsky was too. They're so clearly because that's what they're seeing at the time. If you read in Lenin's imperialism, that's kind of the situation he's seeing. You know, you're talking about major corporations like um, Standard Oil, which at the time was beating out state-run groups even in the market at different points. And so they're seeing this kind of managerialist firm that is showing so much um, agility and capacity to dominate the economy that they're kind of forming how they how they tackle the situation at hand geared towards that and so then it becomes a matter of you know when you move forward how they're interpreting Marx is also interpreted about okay what are our conditions and so that's kind of I think that's probably one issue that you they can run into is is that you're gearing yourself to a part of the economy that may well shift in the future like we have now you know at, during the turn of the century you're looking at high industry that required the means of production to be centralized or most of the means of production had to be centralized because of blast furnaces and kind of that heat technology that could only be done at that level you didn't have the scale of electricity like we had and so that's kind of why i think that part i think that's in part one of the reasons why you know the individualist anarchists themselves fall at the wayside another thing that you mentioned was you know kind of like the rise of syndicalism and anarchism and then kind of fell off after the first world war and it's funny because i actually did a study during the first world war and if you look into the history of it, all the socialist groups that had been part of the international had gone in their own directions, had gone with their national, what their, na what their country had done when it came down to World War I. It was actually the syndicalists um, and the anarchist groups that were the only ones that, in general, maintained, you know, internationalism, and which led to a, uh, a bit of repression and whatnot later on for them, well, during the process too. And then kind of move, you know, moving forward, I think that's, I think in part one of the reasons why we've seen anarchism gain, you know, more traction recently has been because we, because we're kind of living in a, like you mentioned, that cybernetic world, this, where the means of production and also kind of just the general existence that we're living is, A, it's all online. It's pretty horizontal in a number of ways. You know, there, we do have hierarchies because of the platforms, but at the same time, the overall kind of guiding part of the of the system is still so hierarchical. I mean, I see this every day when I work. You know, the firms themselves haven't started to really change in that direction unless they're part of the more progressive side of things, which is usually the newer industries, the newer areas of the economy are usually ones that are the first ones to signal that change and the first ones to be acting in that way until, you know, that new epoch of technological and economic change has really gone throughout the entire economy. 